친구이자 멘토 그리고 롤모델인 마크 서스터와 함께 이야기를 나눠보았습니다 실리콘밸리 외에서는 가장 많이 알려진 어프론트 벤처스의 사실상 CEO라고 보시면 될것 같고요 스타트업과 벤처 캐피탈에 대한 인사이트로 굉장히 유명합니다 AI, 로보틱스 그리고 전반적인 BC 업계에 대한 대화를 나눌 수 있는 기회가 있었고 그 내용을 여러분들께 공유해드리고자 합니다 Apple has an unfair advantage because of their hardware. But they don't make all their profit from hardware. They make a lot of it from the App Store, which is software. Hardware and software is synergistic. Why did Facebook buy Oculus, the VR company? They didn't buy it because they cared today about VR. They said, we lost the phone. We're never going to win that. It's Samsung and it's uh, Apple. Google spent billions trying with Pixel. the Google Pixel. And yeah. There's still nothing. I don't Microsoft know. tried to. Yeah, everyone tried. But the winner's already won. So Facebook said, what's the next big hardware user interface. Maybe it's 10 years from now, but we need to start and we need to try to be the winner in that category. So they bought Oculus. Everyone's trying to figure out what is the next form factor in the future. I think 15 years from now, we're going to look back and say, I can't believe we sat with our thumbs exactly doing this all how day, about right? This. Yeah. How we see compute will either be like contact lenses or something in our ear, some implant maybe that whispers to us. But But the technology needs to be more seamless. And the idea that we sit scrolling like this, we'll, we'll look back at that and laugh at ourselves. I agree. We talked about this, the um, interface innovation that yeah. we need. We are stuck with this touch screen. This is really, really archaic way to communicate with your computers. And also, it distracts you from human interaction, mm, you know? Yeah. I like the my meta glasses because whenever I go to concert or, or lecture, I can just watch it while recording it. Yeah. So I'm not actually watching it through my camera lens. I'm just watching it through my glasses, but still, you know, being recording and everything. When it comes to robotics, do you think it more as a humanoid robotics or what type of robotics are you excited about? Well, I don't think there's one type of robotics that can succeed and another type fails. Mm -hmm. I think you also have to start with the problem. If you are labor arbitrage, mm -hmm. meaning I'm trying to replace somebody, I know U.S. data, so I'll say the average worker in a fast food restaurant or a warehouse might earn $40,000, $50,000 U.S. If you're going to do a robot to replace that job, the robot has got to cost $10,000 or cheaper per year. So humanoid type robots are too expensive for tasks. On the other hand, if you're doing advanced manufacturing mm. where the equipment costs millions of dollars, your robots can be humanoid or whatever the heck you want them to be like. But if you overinvest in super expensive robots, the labor arbitrage is less. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It, it's all about the cost, less about what type of robot that you're going to use. Yeah. You were talking about AI is foundational for everything. There is yeah. no specific sector of AI. Can you elaborate on that a little yeah. bit more? Andrew, in his presentation that went before us, he said that AI is a bit like electricity. Right. When you think of electricity and you think of oil, they're valuable markets in their own right, but the things that they enable that go on top of them become much more valuable and many different uses. And you go through long periods of time of no real movement, stability, and then you see an arc up. And that arc up becomes really fast. And then everybody throws their money at stuff. Just one year ago, funding of AI companies is up 300% and will be up another 300% this year. Right. So let's just go to the funding market in general then, sure. like not specific to AI. What do you see in the market as, as a VC investing startups in different sectors, how the valuations are moving, where the money is going other than AI? Between 96 to 98, relatively normal markets, but a lot more capital going in. And 99 and 2000 went crazy. So the year 2000 is the worst year ever in venture capital. Right, yeah. I think 2021 is going to be worse than 2000, but I'll explain in a minute. So we saw the growth and then crash. From 2002 to 2005, nobody wanted to put money into any VC business at all. Like it was a ghost town. And then 2005 to 2007 starts picking it out. So when the iPhone launched, there was no app store. So there was no third party ecosystem or anything. But we were on the verge of something important. Nobody knew it at the time. So 2007, 2008, funding picks up again. Mm -hmm. 
In September of 2008, Lehman Brothers went bankrupt. Yes. So between September 08 to March of 09, the markets crashed again. So we've seen this boom bust, boom bust cycle many times. What happened was you had this really big tech boom. You had the adoption of mobile. You had the first AI company starting to be built. The movement of traditional software from server to the cloud. And all of these things happened at the same time. And everybody thought that COVID meant venture capital was going to crash. So everyone stopped funding. But what happened was because you couldn't get on airplanes and you couldn't travel and you couldn't spend money in that part of the economy, you started spending all your money online. So we assumed that that would just keep going. So everyone gave money to anything online and virtual. The most obvious being Peloton. That was just worth billions <laughs> of dollars at one point in time. It's I not know. that it's a bad idea. It was sober yeah. value. So things have normalized mostly in venture capital, except for AI. AI is like its own mini bubble. I want to explain to people how Facebook works, how Instagram works, because not everybody knows this. When a network starts, it makes it free. So if you put your brand on Instagram, you reach your whole audience, suddenly you acquire customers cheap. Over time, Instagram, they make it harder for you to reach your audience. Right now, if you post on Instagram, you reach about 18% of your audience. Why would Instagram do that? One reason. If you don't reach your audience, then you have to pay for ads to reach your audience. And Chris Dixon from Andreessen Horowitz said, networks attract and then extract. They attract an audience and they get the network That's effect. That's a sentence. And then they start like cutting off how much business you can do for free and they extract all the value. And they take 90 plus percent of the value of a network. So now of all the venture dollars out there, billions of dollars going into venture, 7% go to consumer now. It's almost nothing. So it's probably a good time to be looking at consumer. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, I totally agree with you. We've been thinking about a lot on consumer strategy. I think that when everybody thinks about AI and investing in AI, now is the time to look into something else that's not AI because we always buy low, sell high is our strategy. That's something that I always debate with my friends that a lot of Korean people think that the low birth rate is a big problem for the country, but I kind of feel like AI and robotics can take care of the economy. So I think sometimes we are in an advantage to become more active or aggressive on robotics and AI strategy because we have such a low birth rate. Necessity is the mother mm -hmm. of all invention. Mm. So any real big leap forward comes from a need. Thank, Thank you for your time today. Of course. All right, it was fun.